Welcome to CNA TV Long Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, March 17th, 2021. Today we have a special edition of our LTC News segment. Dr. David Grabowski is a professor of healthcare policy at Harvard Medical School. He has written op-eds in publications such as Politico and the Washington Post, served on the Coronavirus Commission on Safety and Quality in Nursing Homes, and has been interviewed by some of the biggest names in cable news. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Grabowski. To begin, let's discuss the challenges long-term care faces in terms of staffing, especially during the time of this pandemic. How bad is it nationally? Uh, it's, it's really terrible nationally. So we've done research suggesting about one in five nursing homes is experiencing a severe staffing shortage. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we've seen a number of staff across the country have COVID cases. We've documented high fatality rates among caregivers. We know that a lot of individuals have left this, this workforce permanently. And then even those that are still working across the country, they're, they're, they're working in conditions of high stress. They're, they're, they're feeling uh, uh, very tired and uh, worn out from the pandemic. So uh, I, it's, it's, it's not just the, the staffing shortages, it's the, the, the feelings among the uh, existing workforce and just how hard that, that workforce has had to push to, to keep caring for our frail and vulnerable older adults in nursing homes. Absolutely. In your view, should resolving the staffing crisis in America's nursing homes be not only an industry priority, but also a national priority? Uh, it's absolutely a, a national priority. Uh, this is so important. If we're going to fix uh, nursing homes, it needs to start with staff. And uh, part of this is obviously reallocating existing dollars. Uh, we're not putting enough money right now into, into our staff. But beyond that, we need to find new dollars. We can't get there alone on, on the existing uh, Medicaid rates that, that, that are paid in, in most states. We're going to both need to increase accountability in how we're spending our existing dollars, but also bring some, some, some new dollars in here. And, and this is not just a, something we should, should say, well, of, of course, industry needs to do better, but policy needs to do better for our, for our uh, staff and uh, th those individuals that, that they're caring for. What have you found in your research, the connection between CNA staffing and quality? Is there any real hard data to reflect that connection? You know, absolutely. Uh, we've done a lot of different studies looking at the impact of staffing on quality of care, and it's an incredibly strong link. Uh, better staffed facilities provide higher quality. And it's, it's pretty simple, uh, and that, that's across the spectrum. So all three staffing types are important. Registered nurses and licensed practical nurses are quite important. But guess what? Certified nurse aides are, are also very, very important for resident outcomes. Yeah, it seems fairly straightforward, and that's actually a, a great segue into my next question. Uh, other organizations are discussing options and possible solutions to improve quality and limit the impact of a pandemic in the future. However, all of these solutions seem to revolve around RN staffing. Why isn't there a deeper focus or priority around CNAs who handle over 90% of the direct patient care, in your opinion? It, it makes absolutely no sense because both have been shown to uh, contribute to uh, better quality. I, I think this reflects some of the challenges that uh, nursing homes and others have experienced in just recruiting individuals into these positions. We know there's, there's a workforce shortage. It's hard to find individuals to work in these jobs. That doesn't diminish their importance. Rather, it suggests that we need to improve the working conditions uh, that, that CNAs face every day. And a big part of that is the pay that they receive, the benefits, just the overall uh, conditions at, at these facilities. Uh, even though this is hard, let's not simply throw our hands up and say, well, we can, we can solve the RN problem, but not solve the CNA problem. Guess what? We need to solve both if we're going to fix nursing homes. Yeah, it's a, it's a dual-edged sword. You got to fix one in order to fix the other to fix the entire sword, basically. Absolutely. And your Politico op-ed, you mentioned several solutions such as increasing minimum staffing levels, pay, benefits, and raising the Medicaid reimbursement. First, 
discuss what you mean here and how it would benefit long-term care and certified nursing assistants. Sure. So this was a piece I, I just published over the past week. And a, a lot of people have really bold and big ideas to fix nursing homes. And my idea, and I, 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 I like where a lot of people are going, but in the short term, there's something we can do to really help uh, uh, nursing homes, and that's improved staffing. And we can do that now. We don't, uh, you know, one of these big ideas that people are throwing around is, hey, let, let's move to small home models. Small home models are great, but that's years out into the future. We can help nursing home residents today uh, by, by improving staffing. And so that means uh, minimum staffing standards. That means uh, better pay uh, for, for CNAs and uh, better benefits in terms of paid sick leave, uh, uh, health insurance, you name it. We need to make certain that, that, our, that our staff are, are supported. And I do argue in the piece that if we're going to do those things, we need to put more money into the system. I, I'm all for financial transparency and accounting. We, we need to make certain that nursing homes are spending the money on direct care staff. That, that's a must. But I don't think we can get to this kind of big change in supporting our staff with just the dollars that are currently at play in the sector. We need to both improve kind of how nursing homes are currently spending their money, then also bring those additional dollars into the sector. Absolutely. And wouldn't, in your view, wouldn't all of these, uh, those three things need to happen simultaneously? For example, the, uh, uh, the staffing, the pay, as well as the Medicaid reimbursement, because many providers would probably balk at the idea of, of increasing minimum staffing levels and pay without any funding. Uh, indeed. Uh, the, the, the term you always hear when you say uh, minimum staffing standards or wage floors, uh, providers always respond with, we don't want any unfunded mandates. They want uh, funding to do these things. And I, I think on the other side of the fence, advocates often point to all the money that's that's misused or all the leakage. But I, 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 and I think th there's something that what both groups are saying. We both need to fix, you know, where those dollars, you know, may be going outside of direct resident care, uh, dollars that aren't going to staffing as they should be. But um, if, if we really want to get to the level, you know, five more dollars an hour for, for CNAs, uh, you know, a, a national um, minimum staffing standard with lots more CNAs in the building providing better care, I don't think we can just do that on, on the existing Medicaid rates. I think, I think it will take some additional funding. And so you're exactly right, Dane. It needs to be all three of these things together. It, it, it's got to be the um, Medicaid reimbursement uh, increase coupled with uh, the, the wage floors and the minimum staffing standards. Of course, yeah. Um, th th that was always the one thing that I've always heard is the, the mandation without funding. We're not going to play that. So uh, that makes perfect sense to me. Uh, during the pandemic, there have been efforts to help nursing homes with funding, but no funds were directly earmarked for CNAs and other staff. Some providers did use that funding to provide hero pay, but not all of them. Should there be funding directly earmarked to pay staff? Absolutely. And that, that was a, a mistake in, in hindsight, that I think the, the relief funds were really important. They were very useful for the, for the facilities. And uh, in some instances, as you suggest, they did make their way into the pockets of direct caregivers. But uh, th this should have been uh, mandated that some part of those, those, those funds actually make it, uh, make it into the pockets of direct caregivers. And uh, I, I, I find this in hindsight really frustrating that uh, many of our, our direct caregivers who were most impacted by this pandemic uh, didn't actually receive the support uh, that was intended for them. And so uh, going forward, this is why the, in the Politico piece and in my other writings, I, 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 wanna, I, I, I want policies that really uh, mandate that the, those dollars find their way into the, in, in, into, into the wages and the benefits and the support of, of direct caregivers. We can't leave this up to the nursing homes or up to broad policies of, of you know, maybe, maybe policy will, will allocate some of these dollars to staff. Maybe a nursing home will spend some of this on staff. We need to make certain those dollars are directed to staff. Well, you know, and I, I think in, um, to kind of expand on that a little bit, I, I think in other industries, you can't necessarily do that, but with 
you know, here in long-term care, because we have payroll-based journaling, that should be something that we could easily track and ensure that that actually happens, correct? Sure. So we have really detailed payroll data. There have been some concerns with certain nursing homes accurately reporting that information, but I do think overall those data have been great. We, we, our team has published a lot with, with, with those data. Indeed, we, we just uh, published a paper uh, over the last several weeks showing high rates of, of, of nurse staff turnover. So mm-hmm. CNAs turn over at, a, at an over 100% rate annually within a facility. Once again, supporting the idea that these are really challenging jobs and we're not uh, providing the support for, for staff to keep them in, in, in these jobs for, for long periods of time. Payroll-based data are great. You know, we, we could certainly uh, make improvements to them to further, uh, you know, improve their, their quality. But uh, we absolutely have the data to, to monitor, you know, who's there, who's working, uh, whether, whether, whether nursing homes are actually achieving the, the, these uh, minimum standards that, that, that hopefully we'll, we'll put into place. Sure. In your op-ed, you brought up a very good point, in my opinion, about how necessary it is to improve the work environment. Increasing pay and staffing levels will be great, but we'll still have many slip through the cracks without a great working environment. Talk a bit about your view here and how we might accomplish this. Sure. I, even beyond uh, the, the pay and the benefits, nursing home work is hard. And obviously the staff love what they do and it's really rewarding work, but it's incredibly challenging. And one of the things that makes it so challenging is the hierarchical nature of of most nursing homes. Uh, Direct caregivers are rarely empowered. Uh, They they rarely have much control over what they do on on an hour to hour or day-to-day basis. Uh, And so nursing homes that have really turned this model on their head and empowered direct caregivers, you find that they're much happier, they're much more likely to keep working at the facility. And guess what? That leads to better quality care for the, for the residents. And so it, I look at it as kind of a win-win-win uh, for, for, for everyone involved. I note in the piece that changing pay and, and benefits and, and minimum staffing standards, that, those are policies. This is really about the culture of work and how we view uh, those staff members. Uh, As you know, Dane, many of those staff members are women. Uh, Many are are persons of color, recent immigrants. And so I do think there's some sexism, some, some, some racism that goes into these views that we're not valuing the individuals that do this work or the work that they're doing. And that, that needs to change. And that's something that, that, Pay will help with, and and and, but but also kind of changing uh, the dynamics of how how uh, the the work is structured in 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 our nursing homes. Well, and I, and I think that's a really great point that you brought up some socioeconomic things here in regards to a working environment and how you can establish a decent working environment by having some policies in place that can actually, because it's really difficult to go through policy and have a good working environment. But through you know hitting those socioeconomic aspects, we might be able to, uh, to help some things. So that, that's a very good point. Uh, lastly, uh, we at NACA are so incredibly thankful that you'll be speaking at our CNA virtual march on Washington on April 7th. Uh, f- this is a two-part question. So first, in your view, what is the importance of holding an event like this? And second, give us a little teaser as to what you'll be speaking on. So sure. So for the first part of that, uh, these staff, as I mentioned in the Politico piece, are often overlooked. And this is an opportunity to put uh, these, uh, what I really consider heroes, front and center. Uh, They they haven't been supported the way they need to be supported during this pandemic and even pre-pandemic. And so this is an opportunity uh, to to show uh, how how grateful we are to everything that they've done, but also to, to show policymakers that, hey, you need to, to direct resources uh, to, the, to these individuals. In, in terms of what, I, what I'm planning to say, just to give a teaser, I, 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 I wanna make the point that the work they do matters, that it, 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 the, the number of staff in the building is the most important factor towards establishing good quality care. Whether you talk, you know, and whether it's, it's, it's sort of talking to residents about what matters most to them or looking at kind of the big data sets, both of those approaches support a simple idea. Staff are, are what matter. And 
we haven't established policies to date that really encourage uh, staff retentions, uh, the, uh, staff pay, staff uh, benefits, uh, the number of staff in, in a nursing home. And so uh, I will focus uh, my, my remarks on establishing the importance of staff and how we've kind of undervalued them and, and then how we might going forward provide some some uh, diff different resources to 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 actually uh, su support this this workforce. And as you as you can probably guess, Dane, my my political piece will provide a nice kind of framework for kind of the the, the types of types of policies or ideas that I, that I think could really help with with uh, this workforce. Absolutely, and you know we're we're really looking forward to seeing you in a few weeks as many of the CNA registrants that are going to be attending, they've loved them from Dr. Grabowski. So uh, we're very much looking forward to getting to hear you speak. You spoke at our, at our summit as well, and you did an amazing job. So I'm sure that it will be nothing less than wonderful. And again, Dr. Grabowski, I really, really do thank you for joining us today. Uh, many CNAs will be able to have an opportunity to watch this uh, via our YouTube channel, CNA TV. And again, I want to thank you so much, Dr. Grabowski. Yeah. I can't wait for the March. Looking forward to spending some time with everyone. And thanks to everyone for everything you're doing during this pandemic and, and uh, always. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Grabowski. And thank you for watching this special long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week and I'll see you on Wednesday.